Hey, all my worthy viewers, it's me, JD, your review master, and this is Worth of You Movies, and today I'm bringing it to you a movie that's uh, out for you to watch right now, perfect time for Pride Month. Uh, it's called But I'm a Cheerleader, and here to talk with me about it is Cody from the video store Rejects. Take it away, Cody. Hey, how's it going, Justin? Thanks for having me Good. on. Uh, yeah, But I'm a Cheerleader. It's a comedy or satire came out about 1999 you can definitely feel the 90s vibe from the color schemes and the music um but i think it's a it's a clever it's a cleverly done uh satire on a subject matter that's not funny at all you know these conversion therapies that a lot of people that are of the LGBTQ community have had to suffer from their parents trying to conform to the gender society. And it kind of like makes fun of these like gender norms that, you know, so many people are raised in, you know, with these. And it's got a cast of actors you recognize. I mean, no huge movie stars. It was a little weird to see Natasha Loyne in the lead role here playing kind of against what we know her to play in because this comes out the same year as American Pie and that's more of the character we see her play even in things like Orange is the New Black and Russian Doll, her hit shows on Netflix. Yeah, uh, well, in, in American Pie, didn't she kind of come off a little le les like kind of tough girl lesbianish i know but here she's playing like a the goody girl Not tough girl right yeah like yeah yeah so but, and of course you got clea duvall playing the other character that they that she eventually falls in love and that's actually a really sweet part of the movie is like their little romance and of course these were the yeah. kind of roles she played at that time and as kind of her screen persona also got Rufio in this movie. Um, I forget well, the we do have we do have a major star in this movie. It's Michelle Williams. She's a major star. Oh, yeah, star. who's barely in the movie, but yeah. Yeah. I think and you miss Michelle Williams, who I guess was on Dawson's Creek at this time. Uh, and you got legendary actors, Kathy Moriarty playing the person who runs the camp. You've got uh, yeah. Richard Mull for uh, sitcom fans. He was on Night Court. He's also the voice of Two-Face on Batman the Animated Series. We have RuPaul, which that's, I think, all I remember about when this movie came out was people talking about RuPaul being in this movie. Yeah, trying to be a, like a straight man. Mm -hmm. Like uh, he he's one of the coaches that tries to uh, to to teach him how to become straight, even though there's hints of him still feeling like he's not, you know. Exactly, and that's um, kind of the message of the movie is like you know you can't change who you are. You're born who you are, and I know there are people that don't believe that, but you know it's very true. I don't think people just wake up and decide, you know. And that's part of the comedy with this movie. Like, and you even have a scene with that one girl. She's like, well, just because I like to wear baggy pants and play baseball doesn't mean I'm gay. Yeah. Yeah, he's, I like balls. <laughs> that's what they kept saying. Uh, yeah, so the story is is she's um, she has lesbian tendencies, but she doesn't think that it's anything wrong with it. So her parents send her off to this retreat where they're going to uh, you know, teach her how to be straight again. And uh, yeah, as soon as RuPaul walks out, you see a shirt on him that says straight is right. So you know what's going on here. This is, uh, yeah, this is like a, a spoof of, of what, um, what Boy Erased was, you know, like Boy Erased is a really heavy movie about a kid who's, who's gay and they, you know, through, through Christ and stuff, try to make him straight. And this one is like trying to have fun with it you know however much fun that you can some of the stuff that was said in here i don't know if it can be said now do you right because it's from 20 plus years ago yeah yeah 23 years ago there's the stuff that was said in here there's just no way that can be said again and, and have nobody get offended uh because of you know the population of people who 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 are now not afraid to come out you know um, right, we live in a yeah. more open society than we even did when this movie was made. 
which is good. Well, That's yeah. progress. Absolutely. And and I bet the reason why I didn't do anything when it came out or had any sort of critic love is because they're against it at that time. You know, now it's a cult following is because just like you had when you found this movie, what's a good, you know, LGBTQ movie to watch? Uh, this came up a lot is because it has that sort of cult following to it that, uh, you know, other movies become successful for. So it, I'm glad that uh, that this one came around and is still being talked about. Um, Melanie Linsky's in this movie. She's That's kind of been was... blowing up trying to think of her name i was like yeah because she's on yellow jackets right now yeah and she's i hear she's great and people are like she praising is. you know her performance in the show itself is is really good um but yeah so i i just thought it was interesting because this the way this movie starts when she finally gets that retreat is um she's like why well, what's wrong i don't find it wrong that i'm looking at boobs and like my girls that are cheerleaders and i and i have girls up on my walls at home like she just didn't think that was wrong and then they're like well it is wrong because she does have a boyfriend and she, you know he's really aggressive and <laughs> actually those those kind of moments were were gross but funny because of her reaction Natasha's right because she it. could just be like not interested and she's like I gotta get home for dinner and yeah Exactly, yeah. But, but, I mean, it's so 90s, too, with the cliches, because, oh, she has a Melissa Etheridge poster on her wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but then when they all are, so there's a group of people in there with her. Yeah, Rufio. There's temptations, too. It's crazy that they, they keep them around each other, like girls with girls and guys with guys, and, and then they tempt them, you know? And uh, right. also the leader's son uh, is dressed in like skippy shorts and a tight shirt. And of course, like he's attractive and the guys are going to be all over that. Even RuPaul's character was, uh, I, you know, I all over I do like that. that where, you know, there's a scene where they're confronting Natasha Loyne and there's a whole like graduation where they had to simulate heterosexual sex. And she's like, you're going to do it with him. And he's like dancing while he's like, weed eating or something and she's like <laughs> yeah. i don't think that's gonna work <laughs> yeah i mean can you that's that is forcing kids to simulate sex is that's it's the soul right isn't that yeah like, that's gotta be like borderline world. pedophilia right oh man yeah so there's a lot of effed up things in this movie because in our world in 1989 a lot of things were effed up and i mean things are still effed up i, mean, we're, just, we're I would through. not be surprised that there's still these sort of places that exist and that we there are probably people that could tell us horror stories about their family forcing them to go to places like this yeah and it would be horror stories because uh, I mean, like we got sent off to just camp, like summer camp, right? And, and just because they they wanted to get rid of us, and now these 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 kids have to go to straight camp, you know, because they feel like their ethics and stuff is wrong, and that's not that's not a good good way of going, you know, through life. I'm sure those story, stories are just horrifying. I, I doubt they want to relive them, but. Um, yeah, I wonder where this this movie sort of came from. Like, uh, I wonder if maybe the the director or writers have sort of a, a story about it. Because the director is also the writer, Jamie Babbitt. She hasn't done many movies. She's more of a, a director in TV. Recently, she's been doing uh, Only Murders in the Building with Steve Martin. No. But yeah, she's done, Mar she's done Russian Doll. So she, she came back and oh, uh, worked with... So there's a relation, working relationship there. I mean, that's yeah. that's just the the problem with Hollywood when a female make female filmmaker makes a movie that's not successful. They kind of get forced into having to do TV or do less things than if it was a male filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and about a movie about a tough subject because it, I swear it's it looks like she doesn't she didn't do another movie she just did all the rest is is TV. 
Nip Tuck and Ugly Betty, Gilmore Girls, Gossip Girl, so L Word. So she definitely just stuck around in that. And maybe she liked it more. Maybe she just it's thought probably that... less stressful, you know, not as much results. I know as a director, TV is way less stressful because you're not in charge. You're just there to do do a job because it's on the writers. Yeah, yeah it's the showrunner who's who's the lead. And then uh they're only there for if it's an episode that may be one week, two weeks, right? You know, so they're not even there the entire time. So yeah, it, it's it's like being an AD. You're there just for the the time that you're on set, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, I think the performance in this in this was really solid. I think uh, Cleo, uh, Cleo Duvall, she kind of this is kind of like her sort of niche badass chick who's going against the grain who's you know against the man and stuff so i thought that was a perfect role for her and seeing a young michelle williams because i had never watched the tv show that she was on was was awesome um and then yeah melanie linsky is uh she's killing it right now on tv so Mm -hmm. i think this was and and to see uh, rufio my gosh (laughs) i mean have you seen him before or since you know (laughs) Uh, I know he's most famous now for voicing, uh, please, I apologize to all uh, Avatar Last Airbender fans, is that Zuko is his name? He voices that character on that cartoon. That's one of his... I don't see it on here. Um... But, uh, yeah, it looks like he's done a bunch of, uh, yeah, Zuko, you're right. Okay. Uh, he's done a bunch of acting in uh, TV as well um, and voice acting. So lots of video games. So he, he's around. Um, but, yeah, his top four is Hook, but I'm a cheerleader, Take the Lead, and Hang Loose. So. Those two movies that we know him from now are, are his most popular movies. Mm-hmm. But it was good to see him again. And and RuPaul as like a straight guy was just, I mean, what a classic character. I mean, I think he does a really good, a great job. And I, I'm going to admit, some of those tests I might have failed. I don't know if I could chop a piece of wood, you know. With an <laughs> and I'm not really good at football either, so... And I definitely couldn't fix a car, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, the car one, there's no way I can do so. Uh, but it's weird that that's what makes you a man, right? Right. Well, Top because they're playing with those stereotypes, right? They got the girls, like, cleaning and cooking. Oh, my God. They were just scrubbing the ground. I mean, you can't get more deprivation, you know? Also, this song... They use a song at the beginning of the movie that I hadn't heard before till I saw Death Proof, and I was like, "Well, this did use this song eight years before Death Proof." Yeah, uh, some of these songs were like perfectly in storyline. You know, the the words to the to the song were actually what was going on on screen. So I thought that was interesting, and I like it when movies do that because it's a little subtle. Uh, you know, you kind of have to pay attention to everything to get it off. Um, but yeah, how do you like Natasha and Leona as the lead? I think she does a great job, and it was kind of nice to see her. Of course, this is before this was probably filmed before American Pie, but it was kind of nice to see her sort of play against what her type would be. And I think she does a really good job of kind of playing this sweet but innocent, sort of naive person who kind of finds her own self in this horrible situation and accepts who she is by the end of the film yep i mean they all they all seem to you know uh i i guess it's just like the start of the movie it's like she doesn't even know she's doing it or what if it's even wrong so why would ending up with the girl be wrong Exactly. Yeah. I, I didn't know that the guy that plays her dad is Harold from Harold and Maude, Bud Court. Ah, yeah. I've never seen that movie, but uh, yeah, he, he was he was an interesting character for sure. He's also in uh, The Life Aquatic and MASH yeah, and Coyote Ugly. 
He's great in Life Aquatic as the uh, accountant guy. Uh, cool. What would you rate this? What would you rate? But I'm a cheerleader. What are your ratings again? I apologize. It's okay. It's a WTVM worth of view movie. So, yeah, it's like a on a four four star scale, I guess. So four being the best. WTVM would be the best, which has never happened on my show. I'll give it a three star. WTV. Yeah. This is this yeah, is I, a perfectly delightful, quirky, fun satire to watch. It was entertaining. Yeah, I, I'd give it a WTV as well. Same thing. Very interesting. I've never even heard of this movie. Um, uh, you can watch it on Voodoo for free or Peacock for free right now. I, it's definitely perfect for Pride Month um, or for any month, really. But since it is, you know, we're almost uh, towards the end of it right now. Um, I think it's a perfect you know, a little comedy rom-com to get you through the rest of the month. Uh, yeah, and so, if you yeah. don't want to watch a super serious movie or a movie about people suffering, this is kind of a nice kind of palette. Because even though it's poking fun at something that's definitely serious, it's kind of also a celebration as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... I mean, everyone's going to do what they want to do, no matter what. And you can't change, you know, somebody and how they feel. And if you try, I mean, it's 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 not what we were here on Earth to do. So uh, we we should try to stick away from that stuff and just let people be who they want to be, have what they want to have, do what they want to do. I mean, it, it in in the end, it's never going to affect you personally. You know, even if it's your child, like, isn't the happiness way better than not that the kid resenting you for the rest of your life, you know, but uh, cool. Uh, any last words about this movie? Uh, I think you should check it out. And I think just because something gets bad reviews doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad movie. But I mean, it's all subjective and. You like what you yeah. like. So if you like quirky little comedies and you want to throw back to the 90s, I think this is definitely worthy of that to watch. And I think you'll get some entertainment out of it. And also just see a lot of these actresses that went on to be pretty well known and see them like as they're starting out. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree. Um, that's actually the reason why I started Worth the View movies is because just because uh, Rotten Tomatoes has a certain percentage or just because IMDb has a certain number doesn't mean that it's you shouldn't go see it based off of those scores. You got to see it because every movie is at least the one view. You got to determine yourself what makes it worthy of that view or not. So also, with that said. I just I, just I get tired yeah. of because Rotten Tomatoes is just a website, right? Everyone gets mad and everyone's obsessed now with the Rotten Tomatoes score. They've become Siskel and Ebert, right? But Rotten Tomatoes is not actually giving reviews. What they are doing is taking critics' reviews and, you know, numbering how many positive to how many negative reviews there are. And that's where the score comes from. A movie could have 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, and the majority of those positive reviews could be like a three-star review. Same thing with a negative movie. The majority of them could be like a two-star review. That doesn't mean like, oh, it's horrible, or oh, it's a masterpiece. It just means that the majority of the critics they pulled liked or didn't like the movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, <laughs> they, they themselves are not reviewing the movie. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So with that said, 42% Rotten Tomatoes, 39% uh, on Metacritic, 6.7 on IMDb. 90% of Google users love the movie, though. So, I mean, it just, it's all over. So go make your own decision on it. And uh, we think it's worthy of the view. Those are the most interesting for the most part to me. Movies that live in that 60 to 40 percent because that means like there's a small percentage of people that like really really like the movie and then there's like a probably majority that thought it was just okay instead of thinking it's bad or there could be like yeah so yeah 
Yeah, well, we like to hear and worth the view movies and video store rejects. So we recommend you go check this one out. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at filmnerd85 as well as Letterboxd. I try to review everything I watch, even if it's like the millionth rewatch. Uh, you can check out our show on our Facebook page or our Twitter page. Uh, we're going to be continuing the summer of 1982 with our brunch show. So this weekend we're going to be talking Poltergeist. Ah, all right. Came out in the summer, huh? Yep, this is a summer movie. Still went on and did pretty pretty well cult following wise, I think. Oh, it was a popular movie. I mean it spawned a couple of sequels, so it did it did rather well. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh behind the scene horror stories to that movie as well. Yes. Which I'm sure you For guys the will whole talk franchise. about. Yeah, it's yeah uh, considered a cursed movie. Even the even the people who worked on it but now are working on other things feel like they're still cursed. Yep. Uh, uh, cool. Yeah, well, thanks for coming on and talking with me about a movie I haven't seen or heard about. And as you know, I love that. And it was definitely worth the view. So uh, thanks for coming on. And everybody out there, go check out But I'm a Cheerleader because it's worth the view.